today, uh, we're going to do something a little bit uh, different this morning. Pastor Jeff, why don't you come on out here, my man? Um, and we uh, wanted to have the opportunity, we've entitled this, uh, this message today, Hashtag New Life Gives Back. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty and that cool, has huh? been a, a common theme going into this time of year, uh, talking about how the church continues to give back uh, to the community that surround us. And uh, Pastor Jeff, I always say that a church that chooses and people that choose to live a life of generosity can never go wrong. When there's a spirit of generosity that fills a, a congregation and a people who are giving back and loving not only the body within, but people on the outside, that church uh, can never go wrong. And so, Pastor Jeff, before we get into all of this this morning, I just want to take a moment for you and I to brag on the people of New Life Community Church. Um, and so I want to say to all of you here uh, that are a part of this congregation today, uh, being that this is a Thanksgiving season, uh, I want to say to you how thankful I am for every one of you that are a part of this church. Kathy and I are so blessed uh, to be the pastors here at this great congregation. Uh, I think it's the greatest church on the planet, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, I might be a little biased being the pastor. Who's going to argue with that? <laughs> um, but I also want you to know that it's scriptural uh, when... when we brag about and thank the Lord for a congregation. And in fact, I looked up a couple passages that the Apostle Paul, uh, he was writing and he wrote a few things when he talked about laboring, co-laboring with Christ among those that were working in the harvest field. And in, in, in different books, he would start out by writing this. Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 he said, I thank God every time I remember you. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, he said, We always thank God for all of you continually, continually mentioning you in our prayers. And then he says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Uh, and I think Paul has expressed it so well uh, in his thanks. He was always mindful of the good people that he worked with. And I just want to say to every one of you, I feel equally what Paul feels. I thank God for each and every one of you that are out here and all that you do here at New Life, your commitment to the vision and the direction. We could not do what we do in accomplishing the work of God here without every one of you doing your part and stepping up and not only just being a part, but man, you take ownership in every everything that we do around here, and I thank God for every one of you. Pastor Jeff, what do you want to say to this great group of people this morning? I, I too want to say thank you to you guys. Um, I have a few things that I want to share right here. Number one, I don't know, about 12 years ago when Angela and I were getting ready to move here and, and take uh, the position of youth pastors, we had heard that this church, New Life, was a church that served the community like no other church, and that this church had a heart to go out and to uh, touch lives and to get outside of the church walls. And I, I thought to myself, you know, that's awesome because every church is supposed to be like that, and I've heard that before, but I just want to tell you, when we got here and we truly experienced the spirit that is here, all right, from the top level all the way down to uh, everybody that comes uh, to this church, we were blown away and we still are blown away today. I remember doing projects five, six years ago where 300 of us got together and scraped gum off of the Bella Vista High School uh, quad area because that who was a who need. Who remembers that? <laughs> who was here for that, that one? That was something that they <laughs> desperately wanted to get done. And so we came in. I mean, come on, a church that's willing to scrape gum off now. of the floor is willing to do whatever it takes for Christ. And I, you know, I'm, I know that um, sometimes we come up with some out-of-the-box ideas, some crazy ideas, 
But the fact that you guys back us up and say, if this is the Lord, let's do it. It fires us up yeah. to continue seeking God for what's next. And it also holds us accountable knowing that we have a group of people willing to go with us and charge the hill with us. We want to make sure that we're hearing from God. And so we want to just say thank you for being the congregation that has our back and is truly about God's heart in this community. You guys, we are thankful for each one of you. Hallelujah. Come on now. I feel like I want to give them a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you guys are amazing. And we are going into a time of year, and you've heard us mention, there are three events that we have coming up that we are all very excited about, and I know that you are as well. And it wouldn't be possible without your heart of generosity, your prayer, your prayers, and your servanthood. And those three things are game day, the Christmas toy giveaway, and winter sanctuary that's coming. And every one of these things that we are doing are things that God has spoken to our heart and he's put on our heart in way of reaching out to the needy that are among us. And, and so I want to remind you this morning that what we are doing is very biblical and in fact, Jesus has called us to love on the less fortunate around us. Do you guys believe that? I, I want to read you a passage of scripture that reminds us why we are doing these kinds of outreaches, especially during this time where it can be so difficult for so many families. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. I believe we have this up on the screens. And I want you to look with me if you would. Here's a principle that I want you to get a hold of. It says, Jesus is speaking. He's telling this parable. Then he turned to the host and he said this. The next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and family and rich neighbors, the kind of people who will return the favor, invite some people, I love what it says right here, who never get invited out. The misfits from the wrong side of the tracks. You'll be and experience a blessing. They won't be able to return the favor, but the favor will be returned. Oh, how it will be returned at the resurrection of God's people. You see, we are inviting the ones during this window over the next few months. They're the ones that usually don't get invited. They're the ones that don't have the finances to, to go out or to do the extra things. And I believe this is a biblical principle. Jesus was saying, man, invite those individuals. Do for those individuals that can't do for themselves. And when you do this, they may not be able to return the favor. They may not be able to give anything back. But on the day of resurrection, you're going to see a great blessing for all that you have done. How many of you believe what we're doing is a biblical principle that God wants us to carry out? Yes. Abs absolutely. You know, Pastor, I remember when I was about 15 years old and I didn't know the Lord and I had only gone to a church a couple of times, a youth group, you know, because I had some friends, you know, from classmates inviting me. But I, I remember a few people from the church reaching out to me. And again, my parents, you know, my family didn't go to the church. It was just, I was showing up solo. And there was a few people reaching out to me. One particular lady, Cindy Radabanko, would continuously show up at my house with her son, my friend, and they would knock on my door and bring me to church. They would wait for me to get ready. They would literally let me know, we, you know, we want you to come with us. Come on, we're not going to go without you. And really, when I look back at what was happening, God was utilizing a friend and a mother, all right, a family, was filling them up with his presence, had changed their lives, and now he was using them to change my life. And when we say new life gives back, you know, it's kind of a neat name for today because that's the name of our church. But really, you know, when we receive new life from Christ, we can't help but give back and give that away to others and allow God to work through us. And so I look at some of the projects that we do and some of the way that some of you have come to know Christ through somebody just serving and God touching you uh, through a different individual. So I am fired up. This will always be a passion of mine, just trying to figure out God how can you use me to touch one more life? You know, how can you use me yeah. to touch someone at the Little League field? 
or at the Chamber of Commerce meeting or, or in the pew next to me? You know, how can you use me to change your life? I never want to stop asking myself that question. Come on. Well, today we're going to talk about three ways during this last part of the year in which New Life gives back. And one of those ways is uh, through the About Kids program that you guys had been involved with from day one because of your generosity and your giving. Eight years later, About Kids has become its own organization and is reaching thousands of kids by reaching out to those that are less fortunate around us and ministering to them. And there are three different ways in which we've been able to accomplish this. There are three things, Pastor Jeff. Uh, the first one is uh, first day, which is about the first day of school. We give back the thousand back t pack backpacks. And then it's game day, uh, and then it's graduation day. Now, those two things came online just in the last couple years, and I want to talk about game day because it's been exciting as New Life has continued to sow in, we've been able to take this thing on called game day, and now we've been able to start teams, we have coaches from our own congregation that are coaching them, and tell us a little bit about what we've been doing, some of the teams that are going on, and then what we're about ready to do. Yes, yeah, so just to fill you in briefly, as you see the videos behind us, um, because of the funding that has come in to About Kids, we've been able to gather up uh, children from different pocket areas, and we've been able to basically just say, hey, do you guys want to play on our team? And whether it's soccer season, basketball season, baseball season, and of course, these kids are like, you're picking us? So I remember uh, two years ago, Clark Tourville uh, and I went down to Sayonara Center, uh, the Sayonara Street, and we went into the cul-de-sac, and we unloaded a bunch of baseball equipment, and kids just started showing up. What's this glove? Uh, what is this? What do you do with this bat? And we put on a baseball clinic right there, and at the end of the day, we said that. who We're putting a baseball team together. Who wants to be a part? And we got 15 kids to sign up, and now... Uh, every season, we're, we're putting together these teams and putting them in the leagues. You guys have heard the stories, but it's truly transforming lives. And we've always been able to do one team at a time, but because of the increased giving that took place this year, when basketball signups rolled around, we actually had enough funding to put together three basketball teams. So we're getting ready. <laughs> basketball season starts in a couple of weeks. Uh, we have 32 children, wow. and listen, one, a, a, a new twist to it that I'm really excited about, Pastor, is we've been, a, we, we were intentionally able to, because of the three teams, look within our own body here and find families yeah. that, number one, we really wanted to bless their children and give them the opportunity, but number two, we wanted to be able to include our families on these teams so that they can rub shoulders together so that maybe a child will meet the next Cindy Radabanko in their life, right? And, you know, these children, who a lot of them show up to the games alone, think about that. If you have a child or grandchild in your life, think about sending them to a sports game, not a practice, but a game alone, all right? Uh, these children are going to be able to rub shoulders with some very solid new life families, moms and dads that are holding hands, moms and dads that are treating, uh, choosing to, or tr raising their children with respect. You know, they're going to be able to be around these types of environments. And how many of you think that's really going to rub off on a lot of these kids that have never been able to experience that before? So I'm really excited. I brought a bag up here of what each basketball player is going to receive. Is it okay to take some time them? and yeah do you guys yeah, want <laughs> to take a minute and see <laughs> all right you don't have to now, ask wait me. just a second pastor jeff <clears throat> before we do this there's a, there's a lot of these kids now that are coming to church we're actually picking them up and the kids are actually in our kids program being one to the lord giving their hearts to jesus and families are being changed as a result of all of this coming together. Absolutely. We have several of our coaches and team parents that get involved in the teams. When the season's over, God has just laid it on their heart to continue reaching out to them and continue being in their life. And for a lot of those children, that means I'm going to come to your house and pick you up and bring you to church. So now. it's really been truly amazing. So each child this year, all 32, do you want to just, you want to show them? You want Boom. Every child uh, got to pick their own bag. We had three different bags, all right, white, black, and gray. 
and uh, they got to pick their own bag, all right, we're, we're, we're outfitting them. In faith, we're hoping that, you know, somebody like Under Armour in the future will just see what we're doing and sponsor them, all right? So we've got uh, brand new basketball shorts here. Um, we also let, we had five different style t-shirts for them to choose from, so they got to go down the line, and they got to pick their own. Um, this is what we call practice uniforms, so uh, they can show up to practice feeling good. We got a water bottle here uh, with their names on it. Um, we have to make sure we get them the right socks, right? I mean, you know, socks are important to have. And then we got them <clears throat> a basketball to take home and to be able to practice with. So all of this in this bag was uh, b given to these kids because of the funding that is given towards about kids. And then not only that, but we're also able to pay the league fees. It costs $100 just to play in a sports league nowadays, and that's the minimum. So we're able to pay that fee for all 32 kids. And what's also cool about this, there's so much to say, is the leagues like what we're doing, the public leagues like what we're doing, so they're giving us discounts, right? They're only charging us half the price to be able to do this. So everybody's coming together. Everyone's coming together and just seeing the vision and all of this started with a God idea that pastor that you shared with this congregation a few years back. So I like how God works. Amen. Well, we have one more surprise maybe, yeah. if that's okay. Now that we've shown you the bags and talked to you about the, the players, there's only one thing missing, new life. Do you guys want to meet your players that are going to be playing in the basketball season? Should we take a minute and introduce the teams to you? I think we should, but New Life, you know how this goes. You can't sit down during this part of the service. If you're able to, stand up on your feet for these young men and women. The first team is the Panthers. Come on up here, boys. Come on up here. We've got the Panthers are the first and second grade boys team with Coach Matt Cook. Next up, third and fourth grade girls team, we have the Lady Golden Bears. <laughs> Come on up here, ladies. You know what, I'm gonna read these names off too real quick. We've got Diego, Jacoby, Damon, Jose, Lamberto, Brandon, Christopher, Edgar, David, and then on the Lady Golden Bears, Jordan, Lariah, Zoe, Kaylee, Gabby, Allison, and Jordan. And last but not least, going for an undefeated season, coming back for year number two, led by Shane Tucker, the third and fourth grade boys, the Minutemen. Y'all ready for this? Come on, guys. Right here, right here. High five, high five. Coach Shane, this is your second year with us real quick. We've got a lot of fan support going on right here. I know you're pumped about the season. What would you like to say uh, to the fans today? I think we got a great group of boys this year, and I think they need support. So I encourage all of you guys to come check it out. Coach Shane, are we going to have game schedules available for everybody as soon as they come out? We will. I believe in, in December, sometime in December, we'll make sure to post it on Facebook and let you guys know. Awesome. Let's give a hand to all of our players. Now, Jason, Matt, if you could help me out over there. The, don't these guys look good? Come on. These look like some basketball players. So listen, listen. Like Coach Shane said, in a few weeks, once the game schedule comes out, we're going to make that available. We'd love to see all you guys come to the games and check them out. Now, these, they look sharp, don't they? I mean, obvious, all right? But there is one thing missing, I think. If you're going to be a good basketball player, you have to have some good basketball shoes. So kids, we want to show you in the corner over there, we've got brand new Steph Curry's for every one of you guys. Whoa, come on what do you, now. Come on, dude. 
All right, all right. Now listen, these guys are probably overwhelmed. Like, what is going on? There's so many people out there. We, we need to try to accomplish something very important here, Coach Matt, is a team, a group photo. So you guys need to scrunch in real quick. You guys, if you have your phones, I want you to take picture and then hashtag it, New Life Gives Back. If you can do that while we're doing this, that would be amazing. Go ahead and get in. Go ahead and get in. Pastor Mark right there. All right, where's Bob at? What camera are we looking at? Okay, just pick a camera and look at a camera, kids. All right, everybody looking right there. Everybody say about kids on three. One, two, three. Nice job, you guys. All right. Your coaches are going to take you right back there. You guys are going to go hang out with, with our kids. We're going to feed you. And then you guys are going to go check out Kids Church for a little bit. Didn't these guys do an amazing job up here? Y'all ready for this? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Come on now, huh? How about that? That is, uh, that's awesome stuff. So all of these kids, you know, a lot of them don't have anybody rooting them on in life. And when you come out to those games and root them on, uh, they'll never forget. They'll never forget this moment right here. You standing and cheering them on. So thank you, New Life. Thank you for touching kids and changing their lives for the kingdom. This is kingdom business that we're all about. I do need to mention one thing. Now that we've kind of touched your heart a little bit, here comes the, you ready? We are looking for two, two of those teams don't have a team parent, all right? So if you've got the team parent experience, you've done it before, uh, come talk to me after service. We're looking to make sure that we help our coaches out because um, one of the things we do, well, we just provide A-plus service for the kids. You know, the coaches are dedicated to transporting them to and from games and practices, but also, you know, a lot of this gear, we can't send it home with them during the season because it'll... It'll just show, it'll just go missing. And so our team parents, they help keep all of that under control. They take the, the jerseys home. They launder them to make sure that the kids are going to have a fresh jersey to play with every game. So if you're interested in that, maybe two people want to team up to be a team parent. That would be awesome. So come talk to us afterwards. Come on now. The second thing is the uh, Christmas toy giveaway. We've been doing this a couple years now. And it's just grown and it's taking on a life of its own. As this thing continues to grow, we're able to bless more and more kids. This year, we're going to bless 200 kids. Now, what's beautiful about this, not only with About Kids, right, it's an outreach to the community, but we take care of the needs in our own congregation as well. So we're able to bless both, even with the, with the sports teams and the, the big toy giveaway, Pastor Jeff. Tell us a little bit about what happens with this. We're going to have two hundred children here that you are sponsoring to bring with you and we're going to give each one of those kids 300 kit 300 toys so imagine about 600 toys we're going to be collecting tell us a little bit about that event yes so we are um it's this is a true partnership between about kids and new life so we've been telling everybody straight from the beginning about kids is running the toy drives we're committed to collecting the toys for the children, and then we are handing the children and the toys off to New Life to be able to love on them for this special dessert banquet and to make sure that the true, the true Christmas message, the true gospel is presented at this event. Uh, it's going to be truly life-changing and a beautiful uh, partnership. So you guys know that um, through a lot of our other events that we do through the first day event and through the game day, we have access to a lot of kids that could use a lot of help. Um, but the way that we've kind of spun it here is we want this event. You know what? I've, we've lost everybody. They're looking at these cute kids on screen, you know? <laughs> so am I. What are you saying? <laughs> no. what? I, can't, I can't talk during this. That's awesome. But we, we have... Um, We've include, we're including each of you to be a part of this because we want you, if you have somebody in your life, we want this whole event to be a great evangelism tool for you. I mean, 
Think about how, how easy this is to share the gospel yeah. to a family in a time of need. You don't have to buy the presents yourself. All you have to do is if search your neighborhood, search your kids, um, your kids' circle of friends. Is there a child that is in need, a family that is hurting, a, a somebody that a parent that lost a job this year? You know, and all you have to do is is sponsor them. Take that card and sponsor them, and then bring it back. And then they are gonna get loved on like crazy. We've got the the desserts. We have a uh, a nonprofit coming in, pastor, that's gonna do free vision testing for every child that may think that they need glasses or parents that want to get their kids tested. And every child that does need glasses will receive glasses oh, at no on. charge. Come on. We, we've, teamed up with Miss Cr we've teamed up with Miss Crystal and the kids ministry department, and they'll be running crafts. Every child will be able to make a homemade ornament and bring it home that day. The Orange Bell Food Bank is teaming up with us. Every family will receive a Christmas dinner in a box that they can take home. Oh, so it's just, I, I'm so excited I know. about this time of year and the impact that it has on the community around wow, us. Wow, wow, wow. How many of you have yet to sponsor some kids, but you can think of some that you need to get a card out to? Is there a few of you? We have uh, some cards that are left. Make sure you take those. We need those turned back in by December December 3rd. December 3rd. And there's a lot back. of cards out right now, and so we know they're making their way back. So we do need to, you know, get it in quick because um, we're not sure, you know, 200 is what we've planned for. So if more than, I don't know what's going to happen if more than 200 come in. <laughs> we're just going to give it to the Lord, you know. The Lord but will make it happen. No, we need to sure. get those cards turned in, and uh, we're already going to work. Joe and Susan are heading up our toy drives and going to be collecting the toys and not only we don't just we don't just give toys to kids either. I want to speak to the excellence that uh, takes place in this body. Okay, Joe and Susan, who are they're they're volunteers. They stay up hours once the toys come in, and they look over the cards and they study those cards, and they see that this is an eleven-year-old girl, and this is what she wants, and they look through every toy to find the perfect gift and match it up with that Come child. You know, it is truly magnificent. Wow, that's awesome. This morning, we want to have uh, come out with us. Somebody has a real heart for this. She's one of the uh, children's assistants here that's made this thing really go. Could you welcome to the stage Crystal? Come on out, Crystal. This is a hero in our church. This is a hero right here. Yes, she is. Crystal, thank you for joining us. And uh, I see your heart for the kids and, and especially going out, all that you guys do. I saw you putting together lunches for the homeless. And I keep looking at all the Facebook feeds that you put out with all of the things that you're doing to reach out and love kids, even the kids coming in that are coming from our baseball teams and basketball teams that are joining you, and then also this big toy giveaway that we're doing. Can you share a little bit about what kind of impact this is having and what your heart is telling you about what the church has made possible? Yeah, of course. Um, I wish I wouldn't have seen that video because now I'm really emotional. Uh, I love the kids. The kids are amazing. Um, the baseball kids, I want to thank everybody that drives them here. I don't think you guys understand how important it is for them to be here. And I've seen, in particular, a few children, their lives have been changed forever. Um, when they first came here, I mean, there were weeks that I would have to have them be removed from class because they were being disruptive or disrespectful. And then we did an altar call. And when we do altar calls in kids' church, our fifth graders um, do the prayers. And one of them came up to me and said, Miss Crystal, can I go up there and pray? And he did. Come on now. So um, <laughs> definitely making a difference. I grew up across the street from Sayonara. Um, all these kids, I went to their elementary school. So it's important. It, it, these kids have been through more than most of us have ever been through. So um, their smiles, their faces. Last year we made snowman cupcakes, and one little kid had never decorated a cupcake. Wow. Ever. 
And anybody that knows me knows I like to cook with the kids. Yeah. I like to bake <laughs> with the kids. And so for that child not to ever make a cupcake was, it was heartbreaking. So, yeah, I love it. I'm super excited. And Crystal, what does it mean to uh, the families that they're reaching out to? You know, during Christmas time, it can be real difficult. Some kids even go without during this time. But to bring them into this environment, how have you felt about the impact that this, this toy giveaway is having? It's the smiles and, you know, the parents. It's really hard um, when you're a parent and you don't have money and, you know, you want to provide for your children and have gifts and, you know, they don't understand that mom and dad have to pay the mortgage or rent and they may not get a gift. So I think it's just relief for the parents as well. And it's just an evening of fun. There's like cookies and all sorts of yummy food and they get to pray with their families and it's just... It's a good evening. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Crystal. Yeah. We love your heart. We love what you're doing. Thank you for reaching out to the kids around us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Pastor Jeff, with the, with the big toy giveaway or the Christmas toy giveaway, do you have any needs left? I know the gifts are going to be covered. That's awesome. We need more kids. And then what about uh, a few more people at some of the stores? Yes, we've got the signups in the back for the different um, four different locations. So we we want to have five to six people at each location at all times. So you can see the breakdowns there. And I think there definitely is still a few uh, some some time slots. We only have two or three people, but we want to be represented really well and not miss anybody and give everyone the opportunity to participate. Also, I mentioned earlier in service, the table host, if you'd like to come and be a part of it. Again, this is a great way to stretch yourself. You know, maybe you know that God has really been tugging at you to step out, to be able to be more comfortable praying with people, be more comfortable just serving uh, people around you. This is a great tool where we kind of lay everything out for you. All you have to do is just step into the slot and you have everything around you just to be able to, to be there and to do that and to be really, um, to allow God to use you to touch a family uh, for this one night. So those would be the two main needs that we still have, table hosts and toy drive. Awesome. And lastly, this morning, uh, we want to talk about Winter Sanctuary uh, and all the Lord has done through Winter Sanctuary. As you guys know, it may be our last one as it, as in the way that it is uh, because the city is changing things um, and they may not be bringing the guests any longer. Uh, and so we're going to do this one right. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just pray about what the Lord has next. Yeah. How many of you know the Lord's got it all under control, whatever the future is, yes. we're all right with all of that. He gave, It was a God idea in the first place, and how many of you know God hasn't run out of ideas, so, <laughs> so he's got more for us. But you guys are the ones that make this thing happen, uh, and we put a lot of effort and energy into this. It takes a lot of volunteers, a lot of finances to make this happen, and you guys are amazing with what you give towards this event. Um, I want to uh, I want to show you. We have a picture. I came across this picture. It came up on my uh, my Facebook feed the other day, and this goes back a couple years. And some of you may remember this. Uh, that's Mark. That's standing there, and back behind him is Sam. And they were both standing up here. Uh, I think it was a year later. Um, Sam uh, and Mark had both um, had amazing things happen. Mark was on the streets. And then as that year went on, I remember uh, Mark ended up getting off the streets, got a house, got a car, got a job, and his life was radically transformed. In fact, he was working with Greg Perkins here at our, at our church, had taken him as, in as well. And Mark, I remember him saying something to the effect of, man, I saw what you people had, and so I needed to get what you got, so I started to do what the people of New Life were doing. I received Jesus into my life, and he got radically transformed, and he was up testifying about all the Lord had done in his life. And so it was amazing turnaround off the streets, got his family back, got a place to live. And then also you guys know Sam. Sam we poured into for a long time. 
I believe that Sam was saved. He still struggled with addiction issues in his life. And as you guys know, Sam is no longer with us. He just recently passed away. But Randy took him on as a brother. He used to call him his brother from another mother. And uh, they were very closely connected together. And you guys made a huge impact on those two men's lives. Some of you aren't aware of the impact that you're having. And so this morning, we just want to show a quick video to you of what happens at this event. I think it wraps it up pretty well. It's an amazing thing that goes on. But New Life, why don't you check out this video with us this morning? Hey, everybody. Here we are on night number four of Winter Sanctuary in our five-day love challenge where we're trying to answer the question, can five days of unconditional love really change a life? Well, when our guests came in tonight, it was raining. I can't even hardly describe how bad the rain was. And they probably have about 200 yards to go from where they're dropped off to get all the way into the building. So we decided to grab some of those uh, awnings that are carports that you park under. And we had a team of people, about 12 or 14 of us go out. And when they got off the bus, they got under those carports and we let them into the building. It was just awesome to watch as they came into the building and we cheered them on again. Tonight was a night where we gave them all of the amenities. So we had haircuts going on tonight, different ones that were going up. It was great to see the interaction that was going on in the room. And then we would go over to the pedicures and the manicures and you could see the guests were so relaxed in that room. I walked into the, one of the rooms when they were doing the pedicure and manicure and there was a girl and her name was Lorraine. And I walked over there and two of the volunteers had just prayed and led her to Jesus Christ. We gave her a big old hug. She was crying. We welcomed her into the family. It was an amazing experience. Then we went over to where they were giving the back massages. Uh, they were doing also the facials. Um, and then we were continuing the laundry service as well as um, the showers that were going on. So tonight has really been a night of breakthrough. Our guests have just been amazingly relaxed and I can see the volunteers interacting with them, praying for them and just spending time with them. And it's all leading up to the big day tomorrow, the big surprise that we are about to reveal. So I'm here to tell you, can five days really change a life, five days of unconditional love? And I'm here to say it absolutely can. cool that's good stuff it's about to go down it's about to go down pastor jeff as they were preparing this year we didn't know if it was going to happen but then it finally came together and there's a group um, that oversees all of this tell us about what they do because they get some of the former homeless that were a part of it last year and they actually hire them to be a part why don't you walk us through and tell them what they we're all saying about coming into this year. Yeah, so you guys would be so proud about this. Um, last week sometime, received a text from the director of Winter Sanctuary, and she said, you know, we're getting ready to form our team. We, and like Pastor said, they, they take those that have really made a lot of progress and are in a, uh, in a appropriate position, and they hire them to work uh, and be, be staff for Winter Sanctuary. So they travel around. And um, they're still in the program, but they're hired on as staff, and uh, they're getting a paycheck, and, and they're taking ownership, and they're leading. And so she said, as we were doing our training, and this is a year later, as we're doing our training, I'll just read the text to you that she said. She said, hey, Jeff, we're hiring people who were in the Winter Sanctuary program last year to do, to do intake. Today is training, and I'm listening to some of them talk about new life. They're talking uh, they're talking about how much they enjoy 
being escorted on the red carpet for the banquet, the great food, uh, how you clap for them when they enter the building, and most importantly, how you love them the way that you love them and that nobody else does. Thank you for what you guys do. Come on and that's now. coming from the director. Give yourselves a hand, New Life. Wow. It's amazing. It's amazing. You heard me talking about on that video, a gal had given her heart to the Lord that was in the program. Lorraine was in that room. Well, some of you wonder, does this really have a long-term effect? Does it really change lives? Well, I'm excited to report to you that that young lady, Lorraine, she never did go back to the streets. In fact, a family took her in, and she is a member of this congregation today. Could you give a hand to Lorraine Farmer as she comes out this morning? Hi, Lorraine. Hi. It's hard to even imagine where you were a year ago. And as you've heard us recap and even watch the video that you were on on day four, it brought so many memories back. But um, Lorraine, you were an individual that came in and you experienced this firsthand. Would you tell the congregation... Um, the kind of impact that it had. And, uh, you know, these are the ones that make all of this happen. What would you like to say about that experience? You had rededicated your life back to the Lord, transformed, family took you in, you never returned to the streets. Tell us a little bit about your story, and what would you like to say to the people of New Life? Um, <clears throat> well, first, I just want to say that your question was, can five days of unconditional love change your life? Um, but... It changed my life in four days, so because <laughs> that was the fourth day that I rededicated my life to the Lord. I was like, dang. <laughs> so um, unconditional love, period, can change a life. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I just, I don't know, I don't know, I'm, I'm like struggling to find the words to express to you guys like how much of a game changer this is, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting back there, and I'm watching the video, and it's like, you know, it's really touching to my heart. It's really special to me, um, you know, because those are the undesirables. We, we, you know, when you see homeless people, we're the undesirables or whatever, or, you know, the addicts or, you know. It, but so just to, you know, love on us the way the way Winter Sanctuary does. I'm really excited to serve this year and, uh, you know, don donate and sponsor and serve. And, um, yeah, it just, it, it, I mean, it, I'm a living proof it has a lasting impact. So, yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. Lorraine, a year ago you were on the streets. You had a lot of things going on. You came into Winter Sanctuary. We believe it was a divine appointment for you. I do, too. And at first, you weren't real down with the whole clapping and cheering and like, who are these people and <laughs> what is this all about? But as the days went on, the Holy Spirit began to work and melt your heart. Yes. And by day four, you had rededicated your life back to Christ. And then the Lord made room for you. And as you came out of that experience and we saw your life transformed, I remember you saying very early on, even in rededicating your life to the Lord, next year, I'm going to be serving. Next year, I'm going to be a room host. Next year, I'm going to be in that line cheering people on. And you know what, Lorraine? Next year is here, and we're just weeks away from you doing all the things you talked about. And it's going to be amazing, because there's a lot more Lorraines that are out there, are there not? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I'm, I'm fired up. I'm really excited about that. Like every, every second since God, you know, melted my heart is what you said. That's very powerful because he absolutely did. 
um, I like my whole desire has just been to see God do that in other people's lives, you know, to see, to be a part of him doing that in other people's lives. And, you know, like that, that's, you know, you call it the five day love challenge. Well, I sort of took it in my life and, and, and transformed it into the everyday Come love on. challenge. Come like, on. why don't you challenge yourself to love people unconditionally every single day, you know, challenge yourself to go out of your way to like show people kindness and love every single day and it can change lives. You know, it got, all God's looking for, I believe, is just open opportunity, open hearts, open schedules, like, you know, uh, willing people to, you know, that's, that's all he's looking for. And so this is, this is an open opportunity for you to come. And God's already going to move, like you said. You know, I believe it. There's divine appointments, especially if this is the last year Winter Sanctuary is going to be. I believe, I was talking to Jeff about it, I believe there's, you know, absolutely a you know, purpose behind it. And so God's already going to move. If you want to come and be a part and you want to see what he's going to do and how he's going to change people's lives, you know, and be a part of that, like I, I strongly encourage, I strongly endorse that. <laughs> and I want to say from the Marks to the Sams to the Lorraines, the money that you invest, every dollar that you give to Winter Sanctuary goes directly to the guests. And I would say this is money well spent, bringing people into the kingdom and lives being changed. And so uh, when you invest, if you decide you're going to give, we're still a little bit short along the way. And there is no pressure here. We believe the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And if he speaks, give. And, and when you give, people's lives are truly being transformed for uh, the kingdom. And Pastor Jeff, as we're wrapping up this morning... Um, there are different areas that you have listed along this wall that we need to talk about before we go. Tell me what these uh, signups are all about, would yes, you? Yes, I will. Uh, just one thing to you, Lorraine. I just was thinking about this. I'm really excited for you because we've hosted Winter Sanctuary for about five years now. And one of the things I've noticed is a lot of the guests, when they come back, they, you know, they know each other. We recognize them. They recognize us. You know, you guys, especially that were in the program last year, built some very close bonds. Um, you're probably going to see some familiar faces, you know, on that first night. And they, you're going to be a familiar face to them. And I personally am looking forward to, and I'm committed to praying for you that week because I believe their hearts are going to be wide open to every word you have to say because what one of them doesn't want to be in your shoes next year? And for you to be able to tell them the secret recipe to that is Christ, right? Um, I think this is going to be something very special that we all get to watch, and it'll be a first for us. So Amen. very excited. Along the sidewalls, you see um, the, the sign-up sheets. Uh, the, the quickest way to just go through this is every paper represents a different area of service, okay? And so um, I encourage you, when we're done, to take a few moments. It might get a little crowded, but it's worth it. Don't just sign your name up on anything. Pick one or two things that just speak out to you. Make sure you look at the time and the dates. Every one of those has a different time and date that it's required, you know, so different services. So there's a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday morning, and there's a prep, and then there's after the event is over. So there's lots of days and times on there. Make sure that it works for you. Then put your name on there. Um, and I would suggest uh, going through at least, you know, at least one whole wall and just asking the Lord, where do you want me to put my name? Where can I serve? We have areas from, you know, uh, working the thrift store, to wrapping the gifts, the presents, uh, to setting up and serving the banquet on Friday night, to every single night um, being dinner hosts and just sitting with the guests during the, the about 90 minutes of dinner time and fellowship and just being with them. That's where a lot of ministry begins to unfold is right there at the dinner table. So there's a lot of needs. Uh, make sure you go through, check it out. And also Pastor Suzanne and Tonya Thomas, they know a lot about every area of service. So they will be at the doors, one there and one here. If you have any questions, see them, and they'll be able to help you out. So I think we're going to get a lot of sign-ups today. Come on now. Are you guys excited about the year-end that's happening? You guys, because of your generosity, all of this happens. In the Lorraines of the world, lives are forever changed for the glory of the kingdom. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And as the worship team is coming out now, I just want to give you a little bit of a teaser this morning. Going into this next year, pray for Pastor Jeff and I. We are partnering with other churches in Fair Oaks and Orangevale, and we are looking forward to pulling those churches together to do something called the Big Day of Serving, where we get all of our churches together, come up with about 25 projects or so in the city of Orangevale and Fair Oaks, and we're going to bring these churches together along with uh, the, the, the city council or other other any other uh, acts of service or groups that want to join us, but we're going to pull together on one day this next year to go out into this community and make an impact together, and we believe God is in all of this. Not even my staff knows about all of this. We've just started talking about this and are just getting the ball rolling, but I believe in 2018, we're going to partner with other churches in the city to see something major happen. How many of you know God can do something amazing? So we'll let you more about th- know more about that in 2018. Let's stand. Worship team, you got something we can go out on this morning? Something a little fired up today? Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for new life and the people that just continue to give and give and give. And Lord, because of their giving, the Lorraines of the world, their lives are being changed. And many others that we may never know about until the day of the, the resurrection day will be rewarded on that day when we see the faces of all of those that have been brought into the kingdom. So Lord, continue to expand our vision and our hearts for hurting people. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, let's sing this together. We're going to finish this morning celebrating the goodness of God. Amen. Let's go. Nothing can stop us, not this Christmas. Nothing can hold us now, yeah. Death is defeated. Jesus, you have overcome, yeah. I'll well, sing one more time. Nothing can stop us. Shining down on us, Jesus here.